Who does Godwin Iemi Fellow work for? By Moses Oludeli Idowu. Published, January 24, 2023. It is time to begin interrogating our public officials. It is time to wake up. Today I want to ask questions about a particular public official whom I have never admired and whose conduct from the beginning raises a lot of suspicions. Godwin Imifelo is the current governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and is presently in the eye of the storm. I am not, for the purpose of this intervention, interested in the storm or in the myriad of allegations levied against him and the attempt by DSS to arrest him. It is a measure of our standard as a people lacking in honor that this man even made it as central bank governor under that corrupt and notorious government of good luck Jonathan we are stealing was not corruption. Imi Felu, lest we forget, was a former managing director of Zenith Bank under whose watch the bank was fined for unspecified millions by the then central bank governor, Lomido Sonusi, for outright violations of CBN rules and fiscal policy. It is a measure of the patriotism and intelligence and even presence of mind of Jonathan that this was the same man he found to replace Lomido Sonusi, whom they hastily drove away even before the completion of his time. Godwin Imifelu is a banker, not an economist. The tragedy of this nation today is that there are no real economists in the highest decision-making body of government. Imifelu was a banker, Kemi Adiesen, the first finance minister is an accountant, Yemi Osimbojo, who was chairman of the economic team at the inception of this government, is a lawyer, and Muhammadu Buhari is a soldier. These are the ones who made decisions for us and none of them understand the rudiments of economics. Something is really wrong with Nigerians and the way we think. We are not thinking of people. Today the legacy of this ruinous and disastrous combination is now upon us, a weak naira, double-digit inflation, mountainous debt, widespread despondency, unemployment, low capacity utilization, etc. It takes a little wrong decision to bring down an empire. Just a little blunder, then another and another. That blunder was first made by Jonathan with the appointment of Godwin Imifelu. I am now convinced this man has no business with that office. The Senate is presently fighting over how 23.7 trillion nairas of debt was accumulated under the nose of a CBN governor through ways and means, lie, currency printing, who does not know how and when to say, no. That is not where I am going today. I ask the question, who does Imi Felu work for? Is he working for us or for our enemies? By us I mean Nigeria, Nigerians, and our corporate interest, and by our enemies, I mean the forces of neoliberal economic imperialism, global corporatocracy, globalist of the new world order represented by WEF, Bill Gates, other agents of colonial exploitation and their local minions working for world government. To be honest with the facts, I am not sure where Imifelu stands. It is not my purpose to raise issues with the weighty allegations by DSS against this man relating to monumental corruption, stealing, terrorism financing, etc., and I encourage the DSS and pray that they really get to the root of this. I am also not interested in his rented CSOs who are going about protesting his innocence or even can, the ubiquitous Christian Association of Nigeria, making a press release as if a Christian is being persecuted. Let me warn these organs to steer clear of this and let a thorough probe be done. Anyone who by his decisions or covenant endangers other people's lives and interests is not a Christian, in the light of the Bible. I have three issues to raise in this question today. 1. The currency change. Nigeria is presently in the middle of a change to the new currency. As a matter of fact, the present currency note will become outdated by January 31, 2023, just a few days from now. Here then is the wonder of wonders, I don't know anyone around me who has the new notes. As I speak I have only cited the 1000 Naira and 200 Naira. The former was given to me by my undergraduate daughter and the latter in the hand of a transporter in a bus, seven days to expiration. Even me. Then think of other Nigerians less visible than I do. Yesterday, January 23rd I went to three banks, First Bank, Eco Bank, and GT Bank and spoke and interacted with the cashiers. I also transacted business. Not a single one of them was dispensing the notes of the new currency. So what is happening? Even their ATMs are not dispensing new notes. I spoke to several customers, they were also frustrated and angry. Where are the new notes? 
Who is keeping them? Who is warehousing them? I am not a young man. I belong to the same age grade as Imi Fielu. I have witnessed at least four currency changes slash transitions in this nation since the 1970s and none was as chaotic, opaque, and shrouded in so much gimmick, secrecy, manipulation, and chicanery as this. Even when Awo changed the currency during the civil war it was more seamless and effortless, despite the fact that we were in a war, than this one being done by secret societies. If you have made a pact with the global manipulators at Davos for a cashless society preparatory to new world order there is a neater and a better way to go about it. It is not by stampeding, dispossessing people collecting their cash, and refusing to give them the new notes in return. It is not by force to convert to cashless. We still have a long way to go to reach there. Today I sent my wife to withdraw money to make some purchases in my local area here, she was denied. She was neither given the new note nor the old notes. Even the ATM machines too dispensed no cash. My own money for God's sake. What is wrong? Has our economy been so grossly mismanaged? What sort of monetary policy is this when even the little that remains of the Nigerian economy cannot function due to asymmetric cyclic thinking? 2. Central Bank Digital Currency A few days ago the newspapers published the story of the introduction of CBN's credit card. The deployment of what it calls the National Domestic Card Scheme is aimed at unifying all payment platforms in the country and replacing all other credit cards and helping Nigerian sovereignty. In the advertorial, the CBN credit card is supposed to achieve seven objectives. The seventh objective is however the most contentious, amorphous, and laden with sinister intentions, especially to those who are not versed in the language of globalist, globalize. The card will augment CBN's effort to ensure seamless dissemination of government-to-person payment and other social impact initiatives thus supporting the growth of a robust digital economy. That in a nutshell tells you the goal of the CBN credit card. The entire seven objectives can be reduced to just one sentence taken from the last line of the seventh, the creation of a central bank digital currency. That is the goal. That is where they are heading and that is why you have to worry and be worried. The whole drive towards a cashless economy, the mopping up of cash, and keeping citizens stranded is to introduce central bank digital currency. That is a nightmare you should worry about if you know what it means. That is why I ask who does Imi Fellow work for? Us or our enemies? 3. Digital currency, why you should worry. The roads to hell are usually paved with good intentions. Even Adolf Hitler promised he was working for a millennial reign or kingdom and Karl Marx promised a utopia. Yet millions of lives were wasted to realize that elusive, failed utopia. The central bank digital currency promises to make payments easier and is being promoted as such but it is a fluke. It is part of the agenda to replace all physical funds with a digital currency which would give them total control over citizens and their private lives. With this instrument CBN and its agents can monitor every transaction, limit the amount spent and even delete your funds as they will. With this, the road is paved for the full and unimpeded control and total tyranny of humanity. The road to totalitarianism is being paved. Nigerians need to be warned that their own CBN has already started a war against them and the political leaders who do not know their left from their right are asleep both physically and figuratively. With digital currency will come a digital ID. So expect another level of personal information processing. CBN wanted to do this some time ago but I shouted and they backed down. Now it is coming because there can't be a digital currency without digital ID. The digital ID would then be connected to our vaccine status, can you see the picture now? So that if you don't receive their vaccines then you get no money. Remember it would be a digital currency, not physical cash, so they just erase you from their platform and all your money. Is this the Davos playbook? If you participate in a protest against the government or write an article that offends the agents of government or of the global corporatocracy then they just clean your money out. And you are finished. With digital currency it is easy, a poor man can be made rich and the rich made poor if they refuse to play the game. That is why you should worry. That is why you are headed, unless you wake up and fight for your soul. 
No one is fettered or goes to perdition except with the chains which he forges with his own hands. It is now time to wake up and make course corrections. As Winston Churchill once said, if you don't change your direction you will end up where you are headed. That is where we are all headed with digital currency. Now is the time to change direction. It is still not too late. Just yesterday news of a simulation of the next epidemic by Bill Gates came to light. The name is Severe Epidemic Enterovirus Respiratory Syndrome, CIRS, which will debut by 2025 in a video titled Get Ready. Readers will remember that a similar simulation 201 was done by the same individual just months before COVID-19 erupted and Anthony Fauci reported in the news saying in 2017 that there would be an epidemic by 2019 with demonic assurance and clinical accuracy. Incidentally, Nigeria is mentioned as one of the nations that participated in the simulation model experiment. Just as the same nation is also one of the arrowheads spearheading the central bank digital currency following others like Brazil, China, Turkey, India, etc. Are you sure Nigeria has not been sold? Have our officials collected money from the globalists? Whose interests are they serving, ours or theirs? So with another epidemic already planned for 2025, we know why cash is being taken away and why digital currency complete with digital ID is being planned. This will be linked to your vaccine status so once you refuse to take the vaccine you have no money. You can no longer buy or sell. During the COVID-19 people refused the vaccines and still could survive by withdrawing their money. But now with digital currency fully automated that would be impossible without ID which may be linked to vaccine status or passport. No buying or selling or travel. You are shut out of the global system. Just like your account can be deleted on Facebook or YouTube based on violation of Nebula's community guidelines so once you go against the new global rulers your money disappears. That is why you should worry. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Revelation 13 verses 16 and 17 once the central bank digital currency comes on board unifying all payments and platforms and digital IDs then the next stage will be to harmonize for all the nations of the world by implanting on the skin of the right hand or forehead. And the cycle is complete. That is the Davos playbook by the WEF globalist turning the world upside down for the beast. And to think that my own CBN is working towards this agenda against me and other citizens worries me. To think that one of my own and an official of government is giving effect to a sinister scheme troubles me. The mainstream media won't go to this level of detail either because they are not interested or hand-tied or padlocked. But this is where we are headed and the CBN has started in that direction. The church in this nation is fast asleep. Can Christian Association of Nigeria may even condemn this article, that is how far we are from reality. However, I know Muslims take their own faith much more seriously, so this information too is for you and will serve you well. Get ready and fight for yourself. Don't be slaves of globalists and the international corporatocracy. The civil society groups are now fully compromised and purchasable, NLC is a toothless dragon, and ASUU is war-weary, wounded in battle, and still licking its wounds. So who will lead us in this battle? Once again I ask the question, who does Godwin Imifelu work for? Good day, Nigerians. Copyright Moses Oludeli Idowu, January 24, 2023, All Rights Reserved. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media. Download the BG Media app today or visit barglobal.net for more podcasts. Mm -hmm.